Hello everyone, I hope you had the time to go through the previous lectures. This is our lecture number 4 and in this lecture we will talk about gain and time constant. Let's start identifying where we are in terms of the course navigation chart. In the previous lectures, we worked on the process modeling and how to represent a process using conservation laws and some auxiliary equations by a set of equations. In this lecture, we get into solution of those equations and also we look into the steady state and dynamic response of the system. Well, this slide summarizes the steps that we use for dynamic modeling of a system. We first start by stating the modeling objectives. Then we draw a schematic diagram of the process just to make things easier and to understand the process better. We list all the assumptions and write the conservation equations, whether it's mass balance or energy balance or others. And then we introduce other auxiliary equations, whether it's thermodynamic equation or a fluid dynamic equation or anything else. And then we perform a degrees of freedom analysis. And finally, we classify variables into input variables, output variables, etc. Well, let's start learning gain and time constant through the example of search tank. If I want to follow the steps of dynamic modeling, step one and two are objectives and a schematic. So let's draw the schematic of the search tank. A search tank is basically a tank with one input stream at the volume flow rate of QI. So just remind you, in the previous uh, examples, we had mass flow rate, this is volume flow rate. And, the out, and one outlet at the volume flow rate of Q and the other uh, thing about this search tank is we consider a cross-sectional area of the tank as A. So this is uh, roughly the schematic and the objective is we want to identify how this search tank behaves during transient and during a steady state. So let's assume that at first, we have a small amount of liquid within the tank, so it, uh, it stays at level H0. And over the time, this level goes up until it reaches this point, which is basically our elevation of liquid within the tank during a steady state. And it stays there constantly, so that will be our steady state solution and the behavior of tank from H0 to HS will be the response of the system during transit. Step three was assumptions. The first assumption is the density of the liquid is constant. And the second assumption is the cross-sectional area of tank is constant. For example, you can consider this a cylindrical tank. I think with this, we can get into a step four, which is conservation laws. In this case, we will write the conservation of mass. The conservation of mass is dm dt equals rho qi minus rho q. And I, if I replace M by density times volume, which in this case is density times cross-sectional area of the tank times the elevation of liquid inside the tank. And we know that these two terms are constant. So we can factor them out and we will have rho A dH dt is equal to rho qi minus rho q and now i can even cancel out 
the rows from the two sides of the equation. So my final equation will be ADH dt is equal to QI minus Q. Just to be consistent, rho is density of the liquid, V is volume of liquid within the tank, and H is elevation of liquid inside the tank. Now I want to go ahead of myself and jump into a step 6 and 7, which are degree of freedom analysis, and identifying input and output variables. So let's see how many parameters we have in this example. The density of the liquid is constant, so it's one of the parameters. And the cross-sectional area of the tank is another parameter. We have one, two, and three variables in here. Inlet flow rate, outlet flow rate, and elevation of liquid within the tank. And the number of equations as of now is only one because we have conservation of mass. So if I write the terms for degree of freedom analysis, number of variables are three number of equations are one as a result number of degree of freedom will be three minus one or two so let's call this case one so it's clear that our case one is under specified so we have infinite solutions for this but we normally want to make number of uh, degree of freedom equal to zero. So let's see what we can do in here. Firstly, let's uh, get into a step seven and identify our input and output variables. So one way that I can help myself is to assume that the flow rate to the system is the input variable and it is noun. To make things even easier, I can assume that the flow rate to the system is constant. So if I do that, then this variable will be my input variable. And as a result, so let's call this case 2, the number of unknown variables will be two i still have one equation the number of degrees of freedom will be one so we still have to utilize one more degree of freedom so let's identify case three so what i'm gonna do for case three is go back to a step five which was other equations and try to fix the issue by adding one more equation. And the equation I'm gonna add is some sort of fluid dynamic equation because we know the pressure inside the tank is hydrostatic and is proportional to the elevation of liquid within the tank. So if I assume, and I emphasize on that, this is an assumption from fluid dynamic uh, point of view, this is not exactly correct, but this is just an assumption to make this problem easier in terms of mathematical point of view. So I assume that flow rate at the outlet is proportional to the elevation of liquid within the tank 
and I can define this equation for that and in here R is resistance so let's say if I had a valve in here which was resisting against the flow so the resistance of this valve is R and I'm just introducing this basically as an assumption and this will form my auxiliary equation in here so we know that Q is 1 over R times H so in this case so we are now solving this case 3 number of unknown variables is a still 2 number of equations become 2 and number of degrees of freedom becomes 0 so the system is exactly specified and we can find one solution for it so we satisfied all of these steps for dynamic modeling if i go back to this chart we've completed this step and now we can move on into solving the equations which is in this case a linear ordinary differential equation and then start analyzing the response of the system in a steady state and transient well now let's see how we can solve these equations first thing i need to do is this is equation one and this is equation two so just to simplify the things i will substitute equation two into equation one which gives me this new equation a dh dt is equal to qi minus 1 over r h by simple rearrangement i can get a r dh dt plus h is equal to r qi Now for argument's sake, let's call these two terms ta and let's call this term a new constant k. And just to give you a heads up, ta is what we call time constant and k is what we call gain. So the rest of this lecture will be to explain what these two mean. So this is a linear first order ordinary differential equation. And there is an analytical solution for this which can be obtained using a standard method of integrating factor so let's just assume that we know integrating factor i will explain that in the next video so the solution of the equation will take the form of h which is a function of time is equal to h0 which is the elevation of tank at time zero times e to the power of minus t over tau plus k q i times one minus e to the power of minus t over tau now there is one simple trick in here so this is the general time varying response of the system but if i solve the system during a steady state what happens is basically every derivative with respect to time will be zero so in that case the equation becomes 
which means that during a steady state, the elevation of liquid within the tank is equal to KQI. So let's call this equation number three and this one number four. So if I put equation number four into number three, I can write the time varying response of system as H zero e to the power of minus T tau plus H S S, which is the steady state elevation of liquid within the tank times 1 minus e to the power of t over tau so it's interesting that the response of the system contains two terms one which is related to the initial condition of the system and one which is related to the steady state solution of the system now let's evaluate the effect of K or gain. For that, I plot equation number four, which is basically the behavior of the system during a steady state. And it defines how the output variable is related to input variable. In this case, the output variable is elevation of liquid within the tank, HSS, and the input variable is QI, and the relation is a line. You know that the slope of the line is K, or the variation of HSS with respect to the variation of QI or if I write it in a more general term the variation of output variable with respect to the variation of input variable and this is the best definition for K because in fact it specifies that K or gain represents the sensitivity of output variable to input variable. So in other words, let's say if we have a large K value so this plot will be closer to the vertical line and in that case a change in input variable results in a very large change in output variable whereas if the k value is small this line will be closer to horizontal and and the same change in input variable results in a minor change in output variable so the larger the k value the more sensitive is the output variable to input variable and just to remind you this is based on equation number four now we can evaluate ta or time constant for that I will plot equation 5 I will just rewrite it in here which is the response of the system during transient so the vertical axis will be H as a function of time 
and the horizontal axis is time. Just to put it into perspective, remind you that we had a tank with the inlet flow rate of QI, outlet flow rate of Q, and the tank was initially filled up to the point H0, and we expect that over the time, the elevation of liquid inside the tank reaches its steady state elevation, which is HSS. So we know at time zero, the elevation of liquid inside the tank is H zero. And then over the time, it has to reach the steady state elevation, which is here. So we know that this uh, plot has to start from this point and somehow go up and becomes asymptotic to this line. So to identify how it behaves, we have to give it a few points and I will do it at uh, intervals of tau. So at t equals to tau and at t equals to 4 tau. So if I put t equals to tau in equation 5, it gives me that ht is equal to h0 e to the power of minus 1 plus hss times 1 minus e to the power of minus 1. And this is almost 0 0.37 and this is 0 0.63 so at this point of time the elevation will be almost somewhere here and if I put t equals to 4 tau ht will be h 0 e to the power of minus 4 plus hss 1 minus e to the power of minus 4 and this is almost 0 0.02 and this is 0 0.98 so you can see even the second term gets us close to our steady state solution which is here so we can estimate that the plot behaves like this. And it's interesting because now we can define the effect of time constant or tau. So basically tau defines that how fast a system reaches its steady state. But the trick in here is, the larger the tau, the slower the system will reach its steady state. Because in this specific example, for example, it takes about 4 tau for the system to reach its steady state. 